Self-cut is a feature of Custom Cutter where you mark the object that you're cutting as the object that is also the cutter. So the cutter becomes the cutted, I think. So we'll switch over to Custom Cutter. And with our shape selected, if we press C, we are now in Custom Cutter. And you know the first cut seems normal, and then the second cut seems a little weirder. And then as you keep going, the cuts just get subsequently weirder because it's using the uh, shape that you're cutting as the custom cutter. And this is kind of one of my favorite ways to just get in and test box cutter and just really quickly create a lot of greeble very fast for whatever reasons I would need greeble. And this is a real fun way to work. However, in this latest release, we also added support for 2D cutters. So if we use this object as the 2D cutter, we can mark it as the custom cutter. One of my favorite things to do is to just draw boxes and just watch these boxes, you know, work each other. And doing it enough times, you'll get some really interesting combinations. I've actually been looking at this, wondering how I can turn this into just really quick sci-fi HUDs and give them levels of interactivity of just scaling and things like that. But that is it. I wanted to just show you 2D Custom Cutter in action. Of course, we can take it even further. I will select this object and we'll use late parent from hops to just parent that. And we'll just move that to the side and we'll bring in another plane. And one of my favorite things to do is to just grab a plane and just work it. You know, it's it's a, it's a 2D object. I'll turn off cyclic so that way I can draw panel lines. And if I want to increase the thickness, I can just press T. I can hit spacebar to complete it. And making panel lines is just one of those things I just enjoy doing with, with 2D Cutter quite a bit. So we'll press Alt-X, mirror this to the other side, and I'll press C, or first we'll switch to Custom Cutter through the DPI, then I'll press C to make it the Custom Cutter. Otherwise, C is Circle Select. And we can just take this and for a purpose of sanity, we'll just shade it as wire and we'll move it to the cutter collection so that way I can just look at a cube and we'll press SX2. We'll look at it from the front and I'll press 8 a couple of times to just look at it from an angle and with our custom cutter we can just draw it and let's say I want to make some adjustments. Well, I can just, while holding left click, right click to just kind of release lock drop this in a temporary state. I can press shift tilde to rotate it if you're not a tilde user, you can press Shift R and that will also rotate it inside, as you can see through the handy dandy help down here. But we can go ahead and just click and it will just go through and we see that there is a failure. So if I use hard ops to press Q and mod scroll backwards, we can see what has happened here. So this particular error is one that happens where the 2D cutter even though it is 2D, doesn't receive the same bounds information that it would if it were just a general plane. So let's switch over to the cutters collection and we'll just locate this object and press N. And you can see the Z dimensions on this is not zero as it's supposed to be. If it were zero, it would have actually worked out properly. So let's just go in and scale that to zero. We see that that does not work. So instead I will control A, visual geometry to mesh, and then we'll try setting the dimensions to zero. So now that this object is at zero, we'll apply to scale. Dimensions are still zero. Our object is still the custom cutter. So we'll go back to our layer where we were and look at our object from the front again and let's draw it. So I'm kind of glad that that issue came up so that I could show you how come it happens and also what we aim to do about it. You know, there's always a next time for us to improve things with these tools. So we will just click and it will just go through and you know just cutting this way just kind of gives me a whole different way of approaching custom cutter of just clicking and dragging and having the shape sitting there and then clicking to apply and then sometimes having to scroll back and realize that i've cut on the wrong side of the mesh so this is also part of the troubleshooting process that we try to focus on emphasizing in hops that if there's a mistake that occurs you know the first thing is is why why does it happen um, by doing that, you can more quickly get in and actually solve these things for good and, and increase your understanding on why they happen. So we'll just delete everything that we have here 
and I'm just going to just create another plane and we'll switch over to Ingon Cyclic and we'll just cut some panels. Sometimes if you let go of control too fast, you release the snapping from its snapping obligations, which makes it a little strange. Or even fast mouse gestures is something that we're still discussing quite a bit internally and aim to rectify. So we'll just cut a few panels in here. Just the most random panels. And just something about cutting panels. Also, in the event that you uh, need to go back, you can press backspace twice in order to undo a point. And then I made special sure that spacebar is capable of applying the way it's supposed to be because sometimes left mouse clicking just isn't there for you, but spacebar always is as far as an escape mechanism. We can also see the logo being hidden by the end panel, but the logo was also made red to be more indicative of what is going on with the operation. Sometimes when you're working on a larger mesh and the computer's getting slower, it can be a little hard to tell if the operation has completed. So as the most heavy handed approach, now the logo is capable of telling me this information in the meantime until we completely rectify it on the box side. So with the shape made, you can press D, switch over to custom, press C, and now this is my custom cutter. So we'll just take this plane, give it a little bit of solidification. We'll apply that and we'll switch over to destructive mode and we'll change this over to slice. So while we're slicing, we can, I was pressing X because I'm old habits die hard, but I'm always in slice when I set it to slice. And we can just slice away on our mesh, just getting more and more random. So this is a little bit outside the bounds of uh, self-cut and talking more about just custom cutter and 2D support, but I believe you guys get the idea. I got my eye on the clock up here, so I definitely want to prevent this from becoming a video too long. So. Hopefully we'll get to our goal within 10 minutes. So now that we've performed a series of random cuts on this mesh, we can just get rid of that one. We'll select everything and press with an active selection, control A, geometry to mesh. And first thing we'll do is just join it all together. We got a little bit disastrous there, but hopefully it works out for us. And I'm just gonna search for rigid and we're going to add rigid bodies which means now this object is capable of falling if we select all and we choose separate by loose parts we get these separations of our mesh and if we select all and we do origin to geometry now the origins are where they're supposed to be and by going under your scene settings which is right here and turning off gravity we can now get the intended result that we're going for here and this is one thing that I did quite a bit over the course of this last release, just testing box cutter daily. I was um, pretty frantic about it. I was like, look, uh, rigid, the rigid body test isn't working. I gotta be able to do the rigid body test. I gotta have everybody doing this rigid body test. So now I'm showing you guys kind of uh, one of the things that I, I wake up and do daily, just kind of testing the tools, just going in and just doing a bunch of 2D self cuts on a plane, replicating them on other shapes at different angles to just see what sort of interesting combinations you get. So I've already seen people getting rather creative with the new 2D cutter system, but I hope that everyone, you know, gives it a try. I mean, you could even use text now as cutters. We, we forgot to add the SVG support, but we'll, we'll come back for that. Like I said, there's always the next time. But with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.